Good evening. I'm Pastor Paul. I'm the minister at Christ Church by the Sea in Newport Beach. This is our Monday Thursday service in which we remember Jesus suffering on Good Friday and his betrayal and Last Supper with his disciples on Monday Thursday. Let us begin with a call to worship. O oh God, it is with heavy hearts that we come before you tonight in prayer and meditation. Our nation, even our world, is in crisis on account of rampant sickness and death. We are afraid and sad and cannot come to your house of worship on this night. We are also sad when we recall the purpose of tonight's worship service, to remember Jesus' Last Supper with his closest disciples, his betrayal by one of them, his arrest, and his execution. Our hearts are so heavy with sorrow and dread because of the pandemic we face that we aren't sure we can really handle reliving the memory of Jesus' passion Jesus suffering right now. Can we perhaps wait until the pandemic is over and our hearts and minds are not overburdened? The timing isn't right. Can't we wait? Or God, is there something you want us to teach your church so that the memory of Jesus can be to us not only a remembrance, but a lesson the memory of Jesus cannot neatly be fitted into our schedule when it is convenient for us to remember it. Are you trying to teach us something about suffering at this time? Whatever lesson you have for us, O oh God, open our hearts and minds to receive it. May we not forsake Jesus in his hour of need. May we not betray him or deny him. Especially tonight, O oh God, we pray to you in Jesus' name. Amen. And now Sarah will sing a solo for us. Thank you. 
Our scriptures tonight come from Matthew's Gospel, chapters 26 and 27. When it was evening, he took his place with the twelve. And while they were eating, he said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. And they became greatly distressed and began to say to him one after another, Surely not I, Lord. He answered, The one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. The Son of Man goes as it is written of him, but woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. Judas, who betrayed him, said, Surely not I, Rabbi. Jesus replied, You have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to the disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will never drink again of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. Peter said to him, Though all become deserters of you, I will never desert you. But Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you, this very night before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And so said all the disciples. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be grieved and agitated. Then he said to them, I am deeply grieved even to death. Remain here and stay awake with me. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Yet not what I want, but what you want. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping, and he said to Peter, So you could not stay awake with me one hour? While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, and with him was a large crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him. At once he came up to Jesus and said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. Jesus said to him, Friend, do what you are here to do. Then they came and laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. A servant girl came to him and said, You also were with Jesus the Galilean. But he denied it before all of them, saying, I do not know what you are talking about. When he went out to the porch, another servant girl saw him and said to the bystanders, This man was with Jesus of Nazareth. Again he denied it with an oath. I do not know the man. After a little while, the bystanders came up and said to Peter, Certainly you are also one of them, for your accent betrays you. Then he began to curse, and he swore an oath. I do not know the man. At that moment, the cock crowed. Then Peter remembered what Jesus had said. Before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. And Peter went out and wept bitterly. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters, and they gathered the whole court around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on his head. 
they put a reed in his right hand and knelt before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! They spat on him and took the reed and struck him on the head. After mocking him, they stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. As they went out, they came upon a man from Cyrene named Simon. They compelled this man to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of a skull, they offered him wine to drink mixed with gall. But when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when they had crucified him, they divided his clothes among themselves by casting lots. Then they sat down there and kept watch over him. Over his head, they put the charge against him, which read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. In the same way also the chief priests, along with the scribes and elders, were mocking him, saying, He saved others, but he cannot save himself. He is the King of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God deliver him now if he wants to, for he said, I am God's son. From noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lemma sabachthani, that is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Then Jesus cried again with a loud voice and breathed his last. Here ends the reading. And now Sarah and Vince will sing a duet for us, P.A. Jesu.
On the night when Jesus was betrayed, he took bread. He blessed and broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup and he said, this cup is my blood shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Drink it, all of you, in remembrance of me. This is a sad night in the life of Jesus and for Christians who remember this night. Jesus is betrayed by one of his closest disciples, Judas, and he's denied by another of his closest disciples, Peter. He is turned over and given a mock trial, and he is executed by torture, by being tortured to death. Crucifixion is one of the most painful ways devised by which a person can be executed, and it was intentionally painful and shameful so as to send a message to other would-be protesters or rebels against the Roman Empire. One American theologian has likened Roman crucifixion to American lynchings. Just this past Sunday, we celebrated Palm Sunday when Jesus was hailed by the crowd as he entered Jerusalem as Israel's long-awaited Messiah. But now the crowds turn against him and shout, crucify him, crucify him. In some ways, the story doesn't make sense. We don't understand why someone meek, humble, mild, and gentle as Jesus would be crucified, why people would turn on him and betray him. Nonetheless, the story makes a powerful impression upon those who hear it, especially when we think about how God works in the world to bring about redemption. In the story of Jesus, Christians see not only Jesus' own suffering, but God's suffering with the world. God's suffering in and through the suffering of Jesus, taking upon God's self the consequences of human sin, and out of love, redeeming the world. I think that one of the most painful experiences in life is being betrayed. I know that when I look back on my own life, those times when I've been betrayed by someone I trusted have been among the most painful experiences of my life. So I have to think what it was like for Jesus on that night when he was betrayed by Judas and denied by Peter, which of course is another form of betrayal. But in this story, we're also asked, who would we have been? Would we have stood by Jesus' side or would we have betrayed him? Would we have denied him? You see, the disciples of Jesus don't come off very flattering in this portrayal. They turn against him. They flee. And Jesus dies alone with only his mother and the women disciples standing by the cross. This is the most difficult night in the Christian calendar when we can't put any neat, easy closure on it. We have to sit with it. We have to live with the pain of Jesus and with the pain of God suffering on behalf of a sinful world, a world that put Jesus on the cross and yet out of self-sacrificial love, he endures it so that we too might find newness of life and forgiveness of sins. At this time now, we'll sing our closing hymn, Were You There When They Crucified My Lord?
Let us conclude our service with prayer. O oh God, we stand before you in awe and in terror and horror at the suffering of Jesus and at your suffering on behalf of a sinful world. We ask your deliverance. We ask your forgiveness. We ask your healing touch upon our world in need at this time. Tonight and throughout tomorrow, may we who claim to be Jesus' disciples not forsake him, not betray or deny him, but stand by his side as he suffers on behalf of a sinful world. And may we confess that this is the Messiah, this is who is coming in the name of the Lord to rule on your behalf, our meek, gentle, humble King, the Messiah, Jesus. Amen.